we're twinning, I see. Oh, I know. I meant to say that to you earlier. We have the right <laughs> idea. Like yeah, it's crazy. Go. Um, I guess maybe I can ask you a question. I don't think I've heard you speak about this, but I feel like you'll bring a really unique perspective, which is, I don't know what you think about this. I feel like there's a lot of young men that feel super disillusioned and are getting really like caught up by like these Tates and anti-establishment yeah. people and just people who really kind of seem to rail against maybe even the entire democratic process. What do you think like Democrats can do to kind of like reach out to these young men and make these men feel like Democrats like care about their interests and needs? I haven't been asked that. It's a very thoughtful uh, question. I've read Richard Reeves' book on the disillusionment of uh, boys and men. I would say a couple things. One, people have to see the uh, economic prospects ahead of them, right? Uh, it used to be that you, you, if you worked hard, you'd have a shot at getting a house, you'd have a shot at being able to support your family, you'd be able to build wealth. And a lot of folks are just uh, disillusioned. They don't think they can ever buy a house. Yeah. They can't afford rent. They don't have a clear pathway to building economic wealth. So I think we have to talk about, in real ways, the economic challenges uh, that folks face. Uh, I think we have to talk about uh, why uh, certain values of respect and respect for uh, women respect for our family matter in a yeah. society and that it can't just be a, a free-for-all conversation that there's a reason that society evolved to have certain standards and throwing things out throwing the rule book out uh, it, it, without reflecting on why those norms or rules exist uh, is is not being macho or brave it's actually just being dumb at times and uh, and having those honest conversations yeah yeah, I mean, I, I think that just to, to, to add to your point, so much of the conversation surrounding young male alienation ends up falling back on, it's like, well, it's the feminists, right? I mean, they're the ones creating these new rules and no one knows what it means. But I think so much of it really is general societal alienation, yeah. right? When you don't know uh, if you miss a paycheck, if you're going to get evicted from your apartment, when you don't have health care that you can rely on, um, it creates a general level of societal anxiety that is really acute. And it's not just men that feel anxious or alienated. It's women. It's everybody in this in this country. So, I mean, generally, what's your sense on the mental health crisis being addressed from an economic perspective in Congress and what can be done to alleviate it? We're not doing nearly enough uh, to, to address the anxiety that the American dream is slipping away for people. I mean, we, what we need to be doing is providing free health care through Medicare for all, free education or career training, making sure that the corporate Wall Street isn't buying up all the housing and having some plan for people to be able to buy a house, uh, some sense that they can stand on their two feet and have an economic uh, future where they can support a family. But if you have men, young men uh, or women, but if, who don't think that they can support a family, uh, who don't think that they can get a house, who don't think that they have any economic dignity, that I think is alienating. And it's alienating for young people across the board, but it has a gender component. Now, I, I, what has come is people are blaming uh, some of the fem feminism and empowering men of women and empowerment of minorities. So first to them who have a problem with that, I'd say tough, get yeah, over yourself. Right. That's, you know, you're not, if you're, if you're gonna rely on uh, being unequal and being domineering and having uh, unequal uh, advantage uh, to have a status, uh, then you're just wrong and you're on the wrong side of history. And I, I think we have to be that direct with, with folks who have that sentiment. But if your alienation stems because you don't see how you can be productive and have the American dream, then let's talk and, and, and let's, be, uh, let's have a conversation. But also I think that we have to be direct in the defense of feminism, right? We've got one side that's blaming feminism and we don't have anyone out there being like, well, here's why we have feminism because we want talented people to have or their God-given potential manifest, and we've had hundreds of years of that not happening. And if you got a problem with that, let me tell you, you're on the wrong side. Yeah. That, yeah. I think it feels like the scary issue that's come up is for a long time there's been a big societal push to kind of help women um, achieve 
at, at minimum equality and now surpassing men when it comes to different areas of life, whether it be workplace opportunities or college right. education. Those are the two big ones. I think a lot of the fear for younger men that exists in society today is it felt like there were people willing to set up a big societal infrastructure to kind of bolster women, which I think we've done exceptionally well. But now as men have continued to fall behind, especially over COVID, I think the dropout rates in colleges for men far exceeded women. Uh, now you're in an area where I don't know if they feel like Democrats or progressive people on the left are going to come out with a, we need to help the men now catch up in college. I think they're worried that that voice doesn't exist in the same way that it did for women. And then because that voice doesn't exist on the left, people look to the Jordan Petersons, the Andrew Tates, the, um, all of the people on the right that are willing to capture the ear of those people, the Dennis Pragers and everything. Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of the fear. It feels like on the left they're scared to talk to majority class sometimes, whether it's white, whether it's men. And then they end up looking elsewhere to, to the right, unfortunately. Uh, that's a, a, a fair uh, point, and here's what I'd say. The first thing we did in Congress was not pass child care, which would have disproportionately helped the two million women who were out of work get back into work. We passed infrastructure, uh -huh. and infrastructure actually helped. The jobs were 70% men. So this idea that the Democratic Party isn't doing things that also help men factually isn't the case. Now, maybe our communication uh -huh. is a problem, but if you had a if you asked me what the highest priority if in COVID was, I wouldn't have told you to go past infrastructure. I would have said go past child care. That was what was that was what was hurting the economy. Uh, Eighty-five percent of women say that child care, lack of child care, is why they leave a job. Mm -hmm. Now, what do I think we should be doing with men in communities that ha have also felt alienation? I've gone to Johnstown, Pennsylvania. I've gone to Warren, Ohio. I've gone down River, Michigan, where you had large amounts of men lose their jobs lose factories, lose industry. Uh, what are, why did we just watch while that happened? Why can't we have a massive reindustrialization plan? Build, bring the new steel plants back that also have a low carbon footprint. Talk about bringing new jobs and economic opportunity. That's gonna help men and women. It's gonna help black and white folks, but it's certainly gonna help the people you're talking about. It's gonna help the white working class as well and the, it, it address the issues of deaths of despair and invest in uh, health care there, invest in mental health counseling there. So I, 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 I think that there is an importance of showing up in communities. And, and we've posted videos where there are a lot of white men who are being helped. We've posted videos where a lot of African-American black men and women were being helped. So I, 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 I think you can't exclude communities and you have to understand that there are definitely communities that are hurting and, 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 and men uh, who are also hurting as long as you never compromise on the principles of feminism. Don't blame equality for your problems. Don't, yeah. don't blame equality opportunity for your problems. Okay. Uh, blame society hollowing out the working and middle class. Yeah, and just to comment, I do. I really agree that the issue it feels sometimes is more a perception one than the reality of what's happening. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I, and and just bringing up the uh, child care. I'm I'm curious. I know the Republicans obviously have a slim majority in the House, but the child tax credit during COVID reduced child poverty by forty percent. Um, is it a priority for you when hopefully the Democrats take back the House in twenty twenty four to? Uh, re-up the expanded child tax credit and make that more permanent policy because I think that's we've tried it and it's worked Joe Manchin and re the Republicans killed it but I would love to see that be more permanent absolutely I mean we know now that poverty is a policy choice in this country we had the child tax credit which was basically 300 bucks for each child for working in middle-class families so you made 50,000 you have a kid you'd get 300 bucks you had two kids you get 600 bucks a month People were using it, we know statistically, to buy school supplies, to buy clothes for their kids, buy nutrition uh, food for their kids. And then we let, and poverty dropped 40%, then we couldn't extend it and poverty has gone up 40%. And the Republicans blamed Joe Biden, who actually brought it down. What we should be doing is extending it. But beyond that, we need, why can't we have childcare at $10 a day in this country? And people say, oh, that's so cheap, how are you gonna do that? Childcare is broken, it costs $10,000 for an average family, and the childcare workers are broke. I mean, how do you have the system not working either, either way? If you did $10 a day, that's still $3,600 a year. That's still a lot of money. We should be funding childcare in this country the way we fund public education. They're doing it in Canada. They do it in every other industrialized country. You say, how do you pay for this stuff? 
pay for it by taxing people in my district. I, I, this is one thing I've not understood for the life of me. The guy who represents all the millionaires and billionaires is telling you raise their taxes. I represent a district that has one third of the S&P 500. It's $10 trillion. How is this a hard vote for anyone else in the country? Like all the billionaires and millionaires, most of them are in my district or in New York. If I can be for this, how can other people not be for taxing the ultra wealthy? And not to mention all the productivity gains from the people that then can work too because they've got childcare for their children. They don't have to drop out of the economy completely to do childcare. Yeah. Exactly, $12 billion of gains yeah. is what is estimated in a yearly basis just by having people be able to live up to their talent. One thing that you mentioned that I think it, it had me thinking, which is essentially this perception issue, right? I think a lot of people get very kind of unsophisticated in what they blame. And you've brought up the economy a lot. Um, but one of the biggest issues I feel like I see in online politics is getting people interested in the economy in the way that the economy actually works, right? Versus like this like nebulous idea of economy. How do you, how do you get uh, average citizens to kind of buy into this idea that the economy matters, that these things need to be talked about, and to get sophisticated enough to understand like different ways that uh, bills and policies can actually improve economic standings for average Americans? Yeah. Well, we can't just lecture them about how they should feel about the economy. They say, a politician, we've created 13 million jobs. Mm -hmm. Unemployment is at record lows. Yeah. And they, they just kind of tune out. They're like, well, come on. You know, my salary hasn't gone up. Yeah. It costs me too much to rent. I, I go to the grocery store and it's costing me more. I am filling up my tank, it's costing more. And got, we got to be real with folks and be like, be, honest that the working and middle class has gotten shafted for the past 40 years. Then we could say, look, President Biden is trying to fix this. He's not going to fix it overnight. Here's what he wants to do. Here's what he has done. He's providing funding to bring manufacturing back, infrastructure back. We have put money in people's pockets with stimulus checks and a child tax credit. Here's what the other side wants to do. We're not going to, they want tax cuts for the wealthy. They want deregulation. We're not going to pretend that your life is magically great. We're not gonna to try to sell you on something you don't feel, but we are gonna to try to say that the policies we're building, uh, done even more, is what's actually gonna help improve your life and get you what you want. Most people don't wanna be millionaires and billionaires. Some do, more power to them, but most people just want a house, economic security, being able to live after their family, and they feel like they can't do that now. Yeah. I appreciate that, Destiny. All right, bye. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed.